preparing the live show. And then I got to make sure I mute it because I'll get a feedback on YouTube. Hi everybody, this is Coach Hart sure with, the, mute it because I'll get a... with the Basketpedia podcast uh, presented by System Basketball. I have head coach Joe Kuhn of the Joliet Junior College team there in Illinois and founder CEO of Joe Kuhn Basketball. How are you doing today, Coach? I'm doing great. How about yourself, Mark? Great. Uh, a little background on Coach Kuhn. Um, he was inducted into the 2017 National Junior College Basketball Coaches Hall of Fame. That's quite an honor, Coach. Um, so that, that means you've obviously been very successful there at Joliet. Um, and you've been quite the guy on the, on the Zoom clinic trail. Um, you're, Correct. You've been, you've been growing the game. I, um, you're known for your mover blocker. Um, I, I know we talked privately off the air. You kind of shifted away from it a little bit, but... We're going to talk a little mover blocker today. What 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 major decisions on on employing the mover blocker offense? Sure. So actually, I I, I change gears on it. I call it blocker mover. So I know I know you know the Dick Bennett mover blocker. I switched it because I think the blockers are so critical in that offense. They're more important. I, I, I tell our guys, these guys are the most important players in this system. So I, I switched them to being – they get first dibs. Uh, but we started running it, I think, about 2013 or so. Uh, and, and the reason we started, started with it is I was looking around trying to match up a system with the players that we were going to have that particular year. Uh, we had a few bigger guys that we, we had to play, uh, you know, that were pretty good defensively and would help us on the glass. And so, you know, our, our spread offense or our position list wasn't going to quite work with that size. And, and so sort of, like I said, started searching around, studied Dick Bennett stuff. Obviously that's where you go. Right. And, and, you know, I, I watched his video and uh, he had no drills, basically five on none and five on five. And my guys are closer to high school level than they are, you know, the big time level. And so we needed, we needed breakdown drills. So we just went to work and started coming up with a lot of different breakdown drills for it. And, and so we implemented it, uh, took a couple of years to really get, to where I kind of had it where I liked it because you're, you know, you're learning as you go and you're playing around with it and you're modifying and adjusting and adapting. Feedback on YouTube. Go ahead, coach. Okay. So who are some of the mentors that you've looked up to with your, with your system? Is it just been, hey, everybody, this is coach Harsh or at the mute it. Getting feedback. Sorry, coach. No worries. Yeah. So, you know, uh, studied uh, Dick Bennett stuff and then uh, Tony Bennett, you know, Virginia was kind of gracious with, you know, some of the things that they do and, and uh, studied that as well. And then just kind of went to work on our own and tinkered with it and, and came up with uh, a lot of set actions that really flow into the offense. And so we have a core of, uh, of sets that we really like where we can put people in certain spots to either get them shots or get them out of the way so they're not getting shots uh, that flow into the offense. And it's a little bit different with the shot clock as well. So, you, you know, you've got to play it a little bit quicker pace than you would at the high school with it. Yeah. Well, as you know, I've been doing system system Zoom clinics and system podcasts with the system coaches and I've been studying Grinnell and, and right. I've kind of dubbed their system mover blocker on steroids because yep. um, stealing a little bit of John Calipari's thunder there where he mentioned dribble drive as Princeton on steroids, but um, because 
in their version, they're set, they got basically two to three guys setting screens, a ball handler, and one guy coming off a bevy of screens. Only difference is they're trying to get shots up in seven to 12 seconds and not necessarily quality. They're going, they're trying to get quantity, quantity and get a bunch up over quality. So, right. um, one of my things is I've studied mover blocker. I'm, I'm been mainly a dribble drive five out Brad Underwood spread type offense lately. Um, one of my things that I kind of criticize about it is, is you don't have to have great athletes. I, I realize that Dick uh, Bennett, I mean, Tony Bennett at Virginia is winning national championship with three-star recruits and did a very good job at Washington state with under the radar guys and built it up and done a great job at Virginia. My right. thing is it takes special shooters to, to score in mover blocker because of the nature of how you're getting your shots. They're coming off screen. So they're going to have to catch pivot screen and with a dribble drive type offense, or even a system where it's just helter skelter and you're just driving and kicking. And basically kids are getting catch and shoot threes. Um, what type of things are you doing to create those shooters? I mean, th that's a tough shot, in my opinion. I mean, there's not too many of these guys on your team. There's not too many clays. Yeah, there's there's no there's no question about it. So I think it's a combination of your breakdown drills, as well as running sets into it. And and so our sets into the offense. So I'm not I'm not one of those guys where we're just going to roll the ball out and play. Although we do we do run the positionless stuff, and I also realize that I'm not the best team on my schedule, more often than not, and I'm going to run into somebody who's probably more talented than us, and so I kind of work backwards. Our goal our goal is to win a national championship every year, and you know we've been fortunate enough to win one. Uh, got beat twice in the national championship game, and at some point I'm going to have to be able to dictate tempo. And so I think that, you know, I talk a lot about the misnomers of blocker mover and that, you know, a lot of people criticize like it's a slow down game or it's a slow down tempo. But if you, if you watch us play, we're shooting 17, 18 on the shot clock a lot. So I think it comes down to like the, the roles that you define with your players, but getting back to the shots. So, you, you know, I think it's the shooting drills that we we end up doing uh, to, to, you know, you're coming off the flare screen. So as you're coming off, it's the footwork, right? It's and it's not it's not that penetrate pitch spot up, have my hands, feet ready, catch and shoot. So it is a little bit different. But, you know, uh, preparing for this, I, I went back uh, from 2012 to 2018 and I, I, I pulled up our stats in in all of the key categories that I think that for me that are, you know, important on winning. Uh, and we've shot better from three point than our opponents all six years. And so, you know, maybe it's the combination of the type of kids that we're getting, although I don't think that that's necessarily it. I, I think it's no matter what offense you're running, it's about putting your players in the right position to get the right types of shots that they can make at a higher percentage. Do you think that kind of goes hand in hand with your philosophy of pack line defense that you that you guys are? A ab absolutely does. It's amazing. So, you know, in, in those same six years, uh, we've held our opponents in the 60s, five out of six years. And the sixth year, our opponents were at 71.8 points a game. And, and so it's kind of funny. You and I talked, you know, uh, and, and we'll get to a little bit later. All my stuff and all my promotional stuff is more on the offensive side of the ball. Yeah. And, and you know, our, our defense is really, really good. And it's very underrated. I kind of like it that way. <laughs> you, you know, coaches don't think, you, you know, they think you're more of an offensive guy. But you start to dig in deep, you know, we're, we're guarding people just differently. So we're not, we're not pressuring you. We're not forcing you into turnovers. Correct. You're not. So the system has five statistical things that they're trying to do. 
Is there Correct. something that you're trying to do like that is key to your success? Like if you pick up the box score or you have yep. set goals, like you're trying to not get X number of paint touches, X, you're trying to limit stuff that are your like your things because in the system, if you hit, if you make all five of those formula goals, you're winning like 96% of your games. Right. So Dean Dean Oliver's factors, right? Correct. So so that's what we're talking about. So, but in the system, it's a little bit different. The system is you want to get hundred shots, half your shots, threes, like 35% of your offensive rebounds. You want to turn, turn the team over uh, 26 times or whatever you choose it to be. And then have a plus minus factor on shot attempts. Right. Differential. So it's not all Dean Oliver statistics. It was, it's a group of kids from Grinnell that kind of helped figure it out. So I was just wondering with your, your system of mover blocker and pack line, if there's anything specific that you guys are trying to attain that is correlated in that's going to win X percentage of the time. Yep. It's uh, for, for us, it's field goal percentage. Okay. So, you know, that, that's the field goal percentage. And so we, we start with that. So we, you know, we talk with our players, we have to win a field goal percentage battle. So how are we going to do that? So offensively, it's obviously get better shots. So our main philosophy on offense is good shot, better shot. That's the, our, basically our number one rule. Uh, you have a good shot. Your teammate has a better shot. He better get that shot. Uh, regardless of whether your shot goes in or not, like we're pulling guys on some of that stuff. I think that's the one thing, and that and that probably is going to uh, go complete opposite of the system, right? We want shots up and we want them to go in. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But but see, I think I think players are smart, so we we know that the games change and players have changed. But players are smart in the fact that they know they had a better shot. You shot it anyways. Mm -hmm. And so the next time that player that didn't get, you know, you, you had a better shot than me or or I'll, I'll I'll flip it around. You had a, you had a good shot and I had a better shot and you took that shot. I'm thinking, damn, I had a better shot. He knew I had a better shot. He shot it anyways. So the next time I have a good shot and you have a better shot, I may give you a little wink and shoot it anyways. Mm-hmm. Now, offensively, that still may be okay. But for me, I think that that destroys your team defense. I think your team defense, regardless of what system you're playing, relies so much on trust in each other. It relies so much on caring for each other because it's an effort thing that when I lose, start to lose trust in my teammate or I think somebody's freezing me out, I think your defense erodes. And, it, you, you know, it's almost the same thing in baseball where where the batter, you know, is 0 for 3 and he, he, he carries it out into the field with them. Mm-hmm. You, you know, so players start to get these underlying things in their mind. And I, I think – the game is too damn hard to play no matter what system you're playing to play with stuff going on in your mind. You just have to go play. Correct. And the freer that your mind can be, I think the better you're going to play. And so, uh, you know, I, I, I just think it's, you know, it's critical. So that good shot, better shot uh, for me is where that offensive uh, philosophy starts and, you know, so if we win that shot selection type battle, and then, you know, obviously it's defense or offensive rebounding is to gain extra possessions. And then defensively, you know, what are we going to do to deter your shots or your field goal percentage? So that that's where everything starts for us. And most of our practice is geared towards winning field goal percentage. Uh, and, and again, if we can defensive rebound better than you, you know, keep you off the glass a little bit, you know, so that and and then uh, the free throw battle, you know, uh, 
and, and again, if I go into this six year stretch, it, you, you know, we won that every year. So it's, you know, defensively that fits into the pack defense, of course. Well, a wild one for you, coach. I know yeah. field goal, when you threw out field goal percentage, I had to giggle a little bit because um, okay. I, had, I had Stephen Groves from Greenville University. Yep. Um, that's the nation's leading. They scored 200 in a game and yep. they averaged 135.1, which is the highest. We're going to say until anybody proves it otherwise ever. Okay. Basketball. Uh, so go ahead. They, so they won a game where, the, where they gave up field goal percentage. 72 percent yep they they um the opponents made 72 percent of their shots right and, and they won just solely because they turned them over like 40 something times right so i mean so it's one of those where i know i've heard it i was a traditional coach and i'm still yep. I, i'm planning on implementing the system and we're gonna pro and i there's things with it that i'm struggling with right like, the layup factors, the five in five out part and struggling with, with some of it, but um, I like so a lot my, of it. My question would be, did they, did they win their last game of the year? Did they win their last game? No, but my no. question. No. So that makes it, you, you know, and, and I'll tell you what, I love playing against teams that run that style. They're, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun, and I can remember we were playing Blackhawk College just probably 10, 12 years ago, and they were running Grinnell system. Okay. And, and boy, that game was a lot of fun. And I think we ended up winning like 132 to 112 or something like that. So let me ask you, though. They got you to play their style, correct? Oh, it did, absolutely. So it took you out of mover blocker or whatever you were running at that time? Co correct. It sure did at the end of the day, you, you know, we, we still scored 132 points, won the game, had a lot of fun. So you set a record. <laughs> you, you know, I, I don't, I don't even know if we that's did. Probably, but, that's probably the most points that your school's ever scored. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, but I can remember looking down at the coach a couple of times. I'm like, dude, we're winning by 25 points. What's the matter with you? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's wild. It's out there. Um, I mean, you got 30 minutes from you. You got, you got the women's program right there in Illinois, all of that, um, yep. that, that runs it. Um, only it's, it's, it's weird. It's niche. It's 1% is what it's being said as right now. 1%. I mean, run it. And I, I don't think he, honestly, I don't think he installed it just to purely win basketball games. Correct. So, I mean, it was other factors. Winning's, winning's great with it, but he, he did it for other factors. Correct. So let, let, let's move on from that. Um, we were talking about um, all the Zoom clinics that you've done, and you're one of the right. guys that have been growing the game. Um, I, I started doing my own clinics in April. Um, part of the reasons why I reached out to you is I had someone, even though they've been coming to my clinics, because I'm not just doing system-related stuff. I've had dribble drive coaches on. I've had matchup zones. I've had various people, but it, it seems to realm around playing up tempo for the most part. Correct. Um, what have you learned during COVID in all these Zoom clinics? Have you taken anything away um, from listening to other speakers? You, you know, I'm, I'm going to uh, give you a good one here. I've been one of probably the worst Zoom clinic participation persons okay. in the country. You know, I, I've taken the other approach to it and maybe it's cause I still don't believe we're going to play next year. Okay. Uh, and so I've taken the time to watch more Netflix <laughs> than I've watched in, you know, 20 years. It's been it. I, and I've compared it to almost like that coach who, all right. Is, is, is now rather than coaching, he's in he's in the booth or you know the, the, the you know the Sunday show or whatever, taking that little break. I had obviously I've studied some, watched a little bit. Uh, I've studied more on areas that we that kind of fit with what we do, 
to see how I can make that better. So uh, Jim Boone's pack defense, I, I just finished up his course and, and our philosophies are very similar. Uh, and so again, it was more about fine tuning uh, some of that stuff uh, as well as studying positionless more because we, we do, you know, you know, the one thing about when you start to speak at clinics, which, which is, you know, started for me a couple of years ago where it's really, you know, been very consistent is you don't want to get pigeonholed into like, this is what you do. Correct. You know, I, I saw Roy Williams speak at a clinic at Thornton Community College, which is now South Suburban College, and has been South Suburban probably for 25 years now. And Roy spoke on, what do you think? What His sec- secondary break. And yeah. so now if you if you go to Vegas, you were in Vegas last year. Yep. Uh Roy spoke on his secondary break. And if you if you heard Beheim, you'd hear two three zone and transition game. Right. So it's just, you know, <laughs> and so uh, we 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 run probably more offense that's not mover blocker than we do. Okay. Uh, so so we run a lot of sets. We do run positionless. The thing that we have is 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 I've always thought you know we have what we want to do but i'm not married to it got it in that i have to try to put our players in the best position to be successful so that we can win games and if i have to adapt adjust modify throw out change i'm going to do that and and we've had a couple couple times where you know if we wouldn't have we wouldn't have done as well as we did that's good. Well, I'm going to take a little Mike Neighbors from you from Arkansas. Um, I had him on a Zoom clinic, and he was a Saturday yep. afternoon. And Mike's great. Uh, he he did top three everything. So okay. It, it was podcasts. It was this. So since you've been doing the Netflix thing, what what's the what's the top three things that you've been streaming? Yeah. So uh, Ozark obviously was one of them. Ozark, yes. You know. Uh, and, and a good friend of mine has a place uh, down there in, in, on, on, in the Ozarks on the beach. And so we have fun with that. And right now, I, again, I probably one of the few people that never watched Grey's Anatomy until about a week ago. And, and so I, I've been watching that. It's like, oh, my goodness, this is unbelievable. <laughs> uh, c- kind of hooked on it. And uh, Breaking Bad. Breaking I've never Bad. Probably one of the few that never seen Breaking Bad either. Right here, man. I, I, so that's gonna you're gonna make me load that one up. Um, Ozark for me, I'm, I'm, I binge that one. I'm all over that one. Yes. My one word that I say after every season, I'm not gonna ruin it for anybody, but is damn. Yeah. The final episode, you go damn, and you go, you, you kind of like go. Are they signed for next year? And when is it gonna? When, when's it gonna start? When's it gonna be uh, dropped again? Right. Um, I mean, I'm going to go as a coach though, for you, I'm going to add one. Yeah. Um, last chance you, but you know what? I I've, I've watched, uh, those as well. And, and all American. I've not seen that one, but that's, that's last... based on foot. All Americans based on football as well. Um, last chance you, I, they just dropped their new one, but 2021, not very many people know, um, they did, um, East LA junior college. Basketball, basketball right out basketball. here in California. So that's gonna be that's gonna be huge for the basketball coaching community to watch and Correct. junior college probably. Uh, right. Uh, let let let's shift gears and talk about what it's like as a JUCO coach. Um, you're on the national junior college stage here in California. We're not associated with that. Um, right. and you, you told me you're D three, right? So that limits your new you don't get the benefits of what a D1 gets. Um, do you want to kind of share to people that may not know how that works? Because there's three levels, right? D1, D2, D3? Right. D1, D2, D3. D1 can fully fund everything. And so it's basically an institution decision. Okay. So at D1, you can fully fund tuition, books, housing, the whole deal. But not everybody, not all schools choose to fully fund but they're competing at that level. 
makes no sense to me. We have a number of them in our region that are D1, but they don't fund it at all. I'm like, well, why would you try to compete at that level? Uh, D2 can fund tuition only. Uh, a lot of them will, will go in district students only. And then some of them obviously will pay for anybody. And again, for me, if you're gonna compete at that level, why wouldn't you just go all the way with it? Uh, and then D3 is, is I tell people it's, you know, like NCA D3, it's, it's no academic money or no athletic money. It, if there's athletic or academic, yes, you can go that way. Uh, so for us, and, and we, we primarily play in a division two region and a very, very strong one. Uh, it, you know, we've got to recruit a little bit differently and, and maybe uh, because we play primarily division in two schools, maybe that's why the mover blocker pack line, because I've have to beat people that have more talent than us. Mm -hmm. And you know, and so again, I could I could go positionless against a lot of them and think that I'm gonna, you, you know, and their their size is just at the end of the day more than likely. You know, they're they're bigger at every position than us. You know your your odds aren't as good, so I've got to make them defend stuff, make them play a style they really don't want to play, a pace they don't really want to play. And so we've we've got to go a little bit differently. And and typically for us, our lineup, and it kind of works. I mean, it kind of works in today's style. So you said the system, about one percent of schools are playing it, right? I I would say yeah, because I mean Something like that. And yeah. so then if I went to the other side, the mover blocker is probably not real high either. Um, I think it's, I think it went down after Bennett lost for the 16th seed. And then when he won the national championship and went, woo, just like the trend of everything. Like Correct. <laughs> so then, so then I'm wondering, well, what is the other 85% or schools doing? Flow. <laughs> Which is. European? This? I don't know. I have, I have, I have my thing. It's a joke with my group. Yep. Is they call it the Gonzaga ball screen, and right. Me, so me, it's not the Gonzaga ball screen. It's the European ball screen that was created by like the Lithuania and Croatian correct. national. Correct. But just like dribble drive, it takes somebody that's a known coach like Mark Few or yes. Calipari to name something or, yeah. or get it named after them. And then everybody yeah. says, because all 30, I mean, everybody in the end in, in D1 probably runs a version of the European ball screen. Correct. Um, that's, and, that's, that's today's flex. Correct. And so blocker mover for us, because you can tinker and modify it with it, it's probably more like that. So I would say Bennett runs it, right? Bennett correct. runs it. He float, he, he, it's his change up. Like, Correct. Yeah. And, and, and the great thing about it, see, is, is so many schools are running ball screen stuff mm -hmm. that, you, you know, that's why I kind of like this system so much is because I can, you know, I can dictate what you're doing as an individual. Mm -hmm. So we may not be running it traditionally. Maybe we're maybe maybe I don't even know. Maybe I'm running flow offense. I don't know. Do you, I mean, if, let me, let me switch something with you here and throw out a wild one with you. If you switch to a 24 second shot clock. Correct. You guys went to NBA rules. Yes. Would you still run a mover blocker type offense or would you we, be forced we, out of it? Yeah, we, we, we would, we would run sets. We would run all quick hit sets. NBA actions. Yep. In, into, uh, you know, in this, in this, in a ball screen. Uh, we would obviously try to score in transition. Uh, and, and that would be one of the other plugs, I guess I would say. I, I would put our transition system up against anybody's in the country. The, the things that we do offensively in transition and defensively in transition. So, you know, going back earlier, uh, one of those keys for us is, is we have to win that transition game. Okay. You, you know, to win games, we got to score more easier ones and, and not give them up. Yeah. I mean, 
bottom line usually still is even though it's a three point world that we live in, it's usually Correct. the team that scores the most points in the paint wins the game. Correct. I mean, I, 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 I want to go back um, and do like a synergy study or something and just go look at some box scores, go points in the paint, boom, boom, ah, win, loss, win, loss. I mean, I'm sure you know it. I'm sure you have an idea out of X number of games last year. If we won the points in the paint battle, we won. You know, it, it, it's amazing. And our shot chart, like at the end of the year, for us, offensively, it's th mostly threes mm -hmm. or in the paint and very few two-point jump shots. Yeah. And then defensively, it's just the opposite where we, we really work hard to take the three-point shot away. And obviously, pack defense is to keep it out of the paint. And so we're able to force a lot of two-point jump shots. And, you know, that's the whole premise of the defense. So I was going to – so so God willing, and you don't think you're going to play. You already mentioned that. But I don't think we what's will. What's it look like? What's it look like for the season for you guys at Juliet? Do you got do you like your class coming in? You guys in a, Yeah, I, um, I, I do like our class. We're we're probably going to be a little bit undersized, so so we probably are going to run offensively, we're going to run positionless and sets. And who do you base that off of? Is it your own? Is it Read and Reactish? Is it Villanova five out stuff i mean i mean is it something you created or is it just a combination of stuff uh it's so basic and simple it's ridiculous okay. so uh, that's good so we, simple stupid right so a a absolutely so everybody does the four-man shell drill defensively right uh except for system teams <laughs> okay you guys don't you don't shell drill uh no, no. that's you're that's gonna probably, you're worry about Steve probably not. That's probably not uttered. No. Okay. So, that, so, all right. So we're going to one percent. There's your one percent that doesn't right, do. So, it. <laughs> so we're going to throw you guys out. So most people do a four out shell drill, Correct. right? Pass, pass and cut, fill, uh, you know, pass and ball. So you're you're going through all this stuff. So we, you, you know, one of the things for us is we tell our guys every defense cheats. So right. when, when we're running stuff against ourselves in practice, it's a little bit harder because you know the play defensively and you're cheating. Mm -hmm. And so our concept offensively is to cheat back. Like if there's a counter to everything that they're doing. So if they're cheating, you just be smarter and cheat a different way. And so we, we run basically a shell drill offense and we just play. And, and I'll tell you what, it's so effective with the blocker mover because it is basic. We can run both. I had a coach ask me two days ago, can you run both in the same game? And it's absolutely, the answer is absolutely yes. Mm -hmm. And we've done it a number of times where we'll run sets, our blocker mover and positionless based on the flow of the game, based on what's working or not working, based on how well the other team's prepared or not uh you know and a, a real good example for us we we won a 2010 national championship it was our third time in that game in five years we lost in 05 we lost in 08 and we were down we were down 13 with about 11 minutes to go and my assistant said to me here we go again because it's not looking good we're playing a team that's so well prepared defensively. They're taking everything away from us. And we just went to four out, just balled, went on a 23 to two run. And, uh, you, you know, so that again, that goes back to like, you have to adapt. If you just, if you, if you Tony Bennett it against Missouri, whoever they lost to or Baltimore County, so we're watching that game. My wife uh, was with my daughter and I are watching it. Uh, NCA tournament, obviously. And at halftime, I told her, I said, if they don't change the pace of what they're playing, they're going to lose this game. Yeah. 
And they were so stubborn to think that we're Virginia, we're the one seed, we're just going to do what we do, yeah. and we're going to win. Doesn't always work that way. So you have you have to adapt in a scheme. Yeah, video sales went down after that game. Oh my goodness! Uh, and and, and that, you know, at that point, I was mainly just an ebook guy. Yes. So I had all my stuff in an ebook, and I'm like, damn. <laughs> Damn, there ain't nobody buying this so, now. <laughs> so, something that stuck to me a long time ago, uh, Vance Wahlberg. I, I, a lot of people know me as a dribble drive guy and Wahlberg press guy. Uh, been doing it a little bit. And I people. love the Wahlberg press. I, I love the 221 press. Since 2008. So the one thing that stuck with me that I want to just get your thoughts and opinions on a couple things here since you brought up Tony Bennett um, is – Listening to Vance is like DVD set um, where he said, if you're down six with like a minute and a half to go, what do you tell your players? You said like what you were saying, you got to pick up the tempo, drive it to the rim and get it, get the easy shot or kick it and shoot threes. And then you're pressing to try to get the ball back because your, your time to run it now. Right. So he said, if that's the way you're going to play when you're behind, why don't you play that way for the whole game? Right. Why are you now trying to tell your kids to do something that you never practice and you're not good at? Right. So my thing that brought you brought up was the, one of the biggest criticisms of the system is you can get blown out. Um, and you, you told me that you played a team. Correct. And the system and you, and you beat them by 20 and you like kind of looked at the coach and you're like, Hey, what are you doing, man? I'm up 20. Um, but one of the big criticisms I've heard of mover blocker pack line is you keep teams in the game that don't belong in the game because of the pace. So if you're not shooting, just like anything, if you're not, if, if Tony's team isn't shooting well and they're not putting the ball in the bucket because right. it's left possessions where Tony was probably his team was probably superior athletically than the team he was playing. Maybe not because he doesn't get, yeah, I'm going to say, well, maybe, I don't know, maybe not. I don't know if they were, maybe, maybe, but it seems there's teams on his schedule every year. It seemed because you're in the ACC and you're one seed, you need to win uh, this game. But he's playing maybe not ACC opponents, he's playing other, other teams. Correct. That you would assume that he should blow out. Right. So in my, in a lot of people's eyes, that, that system of play mover block or pack line maybe keeps teams around more than they shouldn't. So my opinion is, is if you're not very talented, you should play one of two ways. I have a shot clock here in California. So I'm blessed for high school um, is you either need to play really slow and like limit the position possessions and play mover blocker or a Princeton type offense and shoot under 10 on the shot clock and get really good shots and hit those, gut wrenching threes when you've played your defense and it goes in with like two or three seconds you're laughing and smiling because you know what i'm talking about you yep. you're, you're pack line you're all good you get your closeouts and they hit those under five second threes against you guys and you just you feel that 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 punch to your to your gut or the other extreme you go system basketball and you try to shoot the ball in seven to twelve seconds because i've been on two realms of it i used to try to slug it out be undermanned, but we'd turn the ball over. Right. So um, I'm, I took a different approach when I went to Wahlberg and pressed on making misses. We were trying to shoot the ball in 12 seconds or less and get up and down. And it helped change the fortune of the school I was at. I mean, talent level kind of went up as well. I'm not going to lie. Um, doesn't matter what you, what you run, Joe, you know, this as well as I do uh, talent, talent trumps everything. So um, Phil Jackson probably would not be the guy he is today if he had to, if he coached the same guys that Byron Scott coached. Right. Exactly. So, so it's all, it's all relative. Well, but that's what but I think if you play middle of the road tempo coach and you're just average, do you agree? Do you think you should either play really slow or really fast? If, if you're, if you're not that talented, I, I think if you're not that talented and you play middle of the road, you're going to get beat. Because 
no matter and and this is the the great thing at the end of every play somebody has to shoot correct so you know you got shooters your your stuff looks really good correct they don't make shots your stuff doesn't look very good you know and so uh obviously if you if you try to slow it down your likelihood of turning it over increases Mm -hmm. you turn the ball over you're going to get beat right and so no i would tend to i would tend to agree with you on on that so uh i would still say more than likely like we have some teams in our in our league so our our league's weird so i've got two i've got a division one fully funded team in a basically a division three league Mm mm-hmm I can run with them as much as I want. And if I try to do that, they're going to destroy me unless all those guys were out too late partying, doing what they want to do and just didn't feel like playing that day. And I probably still going to lose because of the size and the athleticism. And maybe, maybe, you know, it's been a long time since I coached high school. So maybe at the high school level, that disparity is not as great as it is at the college level, like where we're at, you know, he's running six, 10 guys that are going to LSU and Oklahoma. And my guys are going to all that Nazarene and, and, and schools like that. Mm-hmm. I don't know what I'm going to do to compete with those guys. I don't know if there's a system that there is to compete with those guys, unless, you know, I'm, I'm just happy for that one out of two times I can beat them. So let me ask you, being a high school coach, running, going to run the system, one of the myths and criticisms, in my opinion, I think it's a myth, is they're only good because of the style that they're playing in. Have you ever recruited a kid or looked at kids that have played in a system, even though you're not, even though you're a mover blocker or positionless and didn't, you weren't playing real up, up tempo? Have yes. you ever looked at kids? Because yeah, you- be, you're still looking for kids that can put the ball in the hole, correct? That's the only thing I'm looking at. So it's, it's kind of, kind of funny, you know, we'll, we'll get emails from players or coaches, right. And mm-hmm. everybody's trying to either sell themselves or sell their kid. Correct. That's a, That's the reality of it. And, and the email about what a great defensive player and teammate he is, it's <laughs> like garbage, you know, delete. I, I can't, I can't teach him the score. I can help them get better at it. I can't teach them to shoot, but I, I can help them get better at it. But if I've got if I've got four guards that can all score, whichever one of you don't feel like defending today, I, it, it's okay. You can sit your ass on the bench. I'm fine with that. Mm-hmm. And so you can get them to play defense harder. I I agree with you. I think defense. I mean, I one of the biggest things I ever learned at a clinic is Gino Ariema. Um, he gets the best of the best in the world. I mean, look at the WNBA. They probably have a UConn Correct. On, on every team, okay? Yep. Um, and, and half the time, it's probably the best player for that franchise. Um, so he said that he, his practices are like 70-30 offense, defense. Correct. And because he thinks it's harder to teach kids how to score. I'm right with him. Defense, so. So I'm going to take some examples. I think defense is just an attitude. Do you want to, or do you not want to? And the same thing with rebounding. And my biggest example of rebounding is Shaq, Shaquille O'Neal, big Laker fan. And he was my favorite of the, of the Laker era, um, of the Kobe Shaq era. I like Shaq more than I like Kobe. And it's no secret for people that know me. So um, when he left, I kind of stopped liking the Lakers. So um Shaq always claims he's the, the baddest man on the planet, baddest center ever, right? Mm-hmm. How many times did he ever lead the league in rebounding? There you go. Dennis Rodman. Charles Barkley. Right. 6'9", 6'8", 6'4", 6'5", for Charles. Yep. They led the league in rebounding. Right. So you can't tell me 7'2", or 7'1", 
prime Shaq, up and down, nasty MVP Shaq couldn't couldn't grab 16 rebounds like Andre Drummond. Right. Or Ben oh. Wallace. Ben Wallace. Ben Wallace, another great example. Guy who beat him. Yeah. Outplayed him in the NBA. Or I don't know if he outplayed him, but gave him fits. So I'm right with you with the offensive thing. So the myth is, oh, he scores all those points because of the of your pace or he's right. getting these shots. So that's part of the things where I think the stigma of the 1%, why people don't do it, because they're being told, oh, you, you can't get your kids to college. Kids can't recruit. Yeah, no, I, 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 would, I would disagree with that. Yeah. So out here in California, I don't know if you, I don't know, I don't know. Are you recruiting nationally or are you just kind of recruiting locally? Yeah, we're more Midwest based, although we have had some from all, you know, all over, but we're, you know, we're half out, half hour outside Chicago. Uh, we're big into Indianapolis, Indiana, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So we've got so, a, usually about two hour, two and a half hour radius. So I got two things for you with this out here in California, about uh, a couple weeks ago now they came out with our schedule. So they've gone to two sports seasons. So they moved all the fall stuff to winter, moved some of the spring stuff to fall, and then pretty much move winter sports and spring sports together in a sports season. So they didn't cut us games. So we're if we get to play, we're going to be scheduled for the, our completed allotted schedule. We're allowed to play nice. 28 games, but they lowered the amount of days. So it's like 72 days instead of 81 days. Right. Um, but our, our scheduled first game is March 12th. So majority of the time we're playing at the same time, junior colleges and all the schools are playing. Now we're getting started like during March madness and towards the end of your season as a coach, do you kind of, would you like that better that you get to actually watch that? And there's two sides to this because they've never done this. They're allowing the kids to concurrently compete with the travel ball team. Yeah. That's gotta be a nightmare. (laughs) So, so, it's, it's going to take some creativeness between the high school coach and the travel ball coaches to kind of coexist and do what's right for those special type of kids. Well, obviously uh, the travel ball coaches are the best coaches in the country. So I'm just being facetious. I, I, I saw, I saw the smirk. So I mean, against it, but I, I'm not a big fan. There's bad, I, there's, there's bad high school coaches too. So yes, there's no doubt, no doubt. Um, I mean, so I, I can see that being a factor with the Nike YBL leagues Correct. and stuff like that. That that elite kid that already missed out on recruiting right now. Um, well, is that elite? What, it would you like matter. that you'll be able to watch more games? Would you have liked that if if yeah, you know ended up doing it? You, you know what? I would because uh, you know it's so hard during our season. Mm-hmm. That's why I, I've kind of enjoyed Netflix, like. Yeah. During, Honestly, you know, during our season, you, you know, if I'm not watching a game film or prepping for a game, like, and I'm watching Ozark instead, in the back of my mind, I'm like, I got to figure out how to score points against these guys. And so you put off the Ozarks and the Grey's Anatomy because you're always worried about what you're doing at that time. And so during during our season, you, you know, I'm more concerned about us than some high school player that probably not even going to play for us. I go to all his games. I probably still not going to get the kid. He'd probably go somewhere. So it's such a hard battle that I don't. It's just hard to get to see him. Yeah. So this would open up some avenues to to see some more kids live. Yeah. Yeah, your your typical kid, like a recruiting process for you, you you start you start getting on him, you start and call him, you start going out to see his game. How long of a process is it before a kid potentially says he's? Because it's not like you're just like California. It's not like here sign something. It's it's like you have to kind of wait till he enrolls, right? Or do they sign that junior? No, we we do letters of intent. Do letters, okay. Yeah, they don't but, have that here. So you know, see, it's still a difficult process. It's amazing to me, and this whole thing is the, the recruiting thing has changed so much. But 
we, you know, I was in contact with two kids last week. Now school starts in about three weeks. Okay. And it's a coach. I still want to wait. I, I still waiting it. I'm like, uh, good luck. And he has good. a lot of, and they probably have a lot of offers. They got none. Exactly. They got none. And you know, the, 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 the people, their, their people, their handlers or like all these people have no reality of how good you have to play at a certain level. And everybody thinks that they're a level better than they are or two levels, you know? So I, th this whole, this whole process is just, it's yeah. amazing, but we'll start, we'll start right away. Uh, you know, a couple of my assistant coaches, they'll start early contacts in August, September with kids. And typically it's, you know, in a normal season, it's mid March to April when we're starting to get our commitments. So it's a five, six month process. It, it is. And, and the biggest thing, you, you know, the biggest thing that burns my ass right now in this whole process is that you text a kid and they, you know, they get back, they get back. And then all of a sudden it's radio silence. And they ghost and, you. They, they, are you hip with the language? They ghost you. Yeah. So it's like, just have the courtesy to, you know, respond back, coach, you suck or whatever, you know, like, so things have just changed in, in, in ways as it, it's just amazing. So I don't know, like, who's teaching these kids, like proper manners it's, and respect. I'm guilty of it. The common form of communication is text messaging or Twitter DMs or, Correct. or, we all are. or whatever, whatever you're on. I mean, you're probably only on it to relate to today's kids. Right. I mean, I'm 45, not sure how old you are. I mean, uh, I'm learning new language today. I mean, I'm learning what a, what a, what a walking bucket means. And like, oh, fill me in. I, I have no clue. That means he can get a hoop anytime he wants, man. He's a bucket. Oh, got, so, it. Got, got so it. That, so he's a bucket coach. So, yeah. so if you want to, if you want to go to the, the local AAU tournament this weekend and say, I'm looking for a kid that's a bucket. Yeah. You might, you, you, you might, you might, you might increase your street cred a little bit. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, so let's, let's, let's talk, um, um, you're doing, I went on your website and you got all these courses and stuff. How did Joe, Joe Kuhn basketball, um, get started? You, you said it yeah. was ebooks. You said you were an ebook guy. Um, Correct. So did you do it through Scott Peterman or who, who'd you do your ebooks through? No, myself. Okay. Yep. I, I just didn't, I didn't want to give anybody any, any of the profit. There you and go. There wasn't there wasn't any profit to begin with. So I don't know what I was doing, but so, you know, I, I had this ebook and, and uh, had it uh, for actually our transition stuff first, as I mentioned, I, I, I think our transition stuff is our best. Okay. Uh, and it's actually uh, my best seller of, of stuff. Uh, and then I had, I put together the, the mover blocker manual, mm -hmm. with all the drills and I had it available through my website, delivered as an instant download, which was great, right? You go on there, mm -hmm. use your PayPal, boom, done, it's download. I didn't do a thing. My phone buzzes, it's kind of nice. I made $12, right? You know the feeling. I'm going to get rich. And so, you know, the the, the point for me was, and, and, and I had a guy that I worked with that kind of pushed me for years. Like, Coach, you got so much good stuff. You need to start sharing it, put together some stuff. I'm like, yeah. I'm like every basketball coach. No, they can't know what I'm doing. Like, I can't tell them what I'm doing. And finally, and COVID I got changed that all. What's that? COVID has changed that all with Zoom clinics. Everybody's yeah. a sharer now. Yes, exactly. Well, not really. They just give you just a little bit. They still give you the clinic answers. The cl and, that, and that's, that's the one thing that I, I do like about my stuff is that it is stuff that I'm doing. Yeah. It's not, it's not, I didn't find it. This is stuff that I've done that has worked for us. Doesn't mean it's going to work for somebody else, but if you're a similar type belief or looking for a similar type thing, uh, 
And so it just expanded from that. So I sent my, my ebook to my friend, Tom McDonald at championship. And, and he got back to me immediately said, this is great stuff. There's nothing like this out there. Let's make two videos. So they came in, we did the two videos. This is a year ago, December or whatever. And, mm-hmm. and so then they, you know, it's all marketing. Right. And so uh, they said, we're going to need you to speak at the Nike clinic in Biloxi on mover blocker. Okay. So you do it. And then a year ago, I'm getting ready to leave to Vegas for the clinic because our junior college all-star games there and our hall right. banquet. So it's in conjunction. So Tom calls me that Thursday. I'm about an hour from leaving to the airport. Says, uh, "We're going to need you to speak Sunday morning. Uh, you're going to fill in for Gino Oriema." Oh, oh Jesus! Oh, so, so, so the attendance factor probably went. Who is Tokyo? Yeah, we we don't really care. But you know what? It it I, the Biloxi went okay. It was a weird environment. Uh, Vegas went tremendous and I had so many coaches come up to me, and email me that you were the best speaker of the clinic. I'll hit on that in a little bit. I, I was, I was at your clinic. So. Yes. And so I tried to give as much as I could about what we do in a short time. I wasn't about spending 10 minutes telling stories nope. and jokes. I wanted to just get right to it. You're a content guy. And again, you, you, you know, I, I go back, like, I didn't want anybody to know what we're doing. I does it really matter? Like they still have to stop us and they could, you may know everything I'm doing, but your kid still doesn't know. My kid doesn't even know. So yeah. like, let's just go play. And so, you know, what we're doing with the site is not about getting rich, obviously. Sure. We'd like to make a little money and we'd make a little bit of money on it, but it's more about helping coaches, you know, learn, grow based on success with stuff that I've had. And I feel passionate about it because it's stuff that I do. I'm not, I'm not making things up just to try to sell stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've, I was known as my friends, why the name of the Baskopedia came about is my buddy uh, started calling me Baskopedia because in the area, like if people wanted something much like your stories, um, I have a huge cloud library of like, I go online and I have them labeled Mover Blocker, Princeton, DDM, System. And I just have all these folders of a cloud. Right. And he'd be like, he's like, what do you have on it? Or before, or I would know the name of the stuff before it had come out and study FIBA basketball and study all this stuff before it got popular. Um, and so he started calling me Baskopedia. He's like, yep. if Mark, if Mark doesn't have it, Mark will find somebody that has it. Yeah. So, so I started being the guy that people would email or in the area and say, Hey, do you got notes on this? And I'd just be giving it away like you. So right. very similar pass. I created an ebook in 2012 and then hence the system basketball getting kind of created and me doing clinics and, and having other people on and me doing some of my own stuff. Um, by no means we're getting rich, um, but we, right. we trying to provide stuff for people and we just value our stuff. That's right. Exactly. Right. Um, and we're trying to help people out. I mean, I get free stuff out. I know you do as well. Um, and I'd like if eventually I'd like you to have come to one of our clinics cause mine's a little different. Um, I think I've told you a little bit about it is it's, it's in my zoom room and it's not a webinar. So you'll actually see every participant. Right. So when you're done with your presentation, you have a live interactive question and answer period. Correct. You know, and that's, that's one of the things that the virtuals, the virtuals are okay, but, and I know like the clinic, the clinic scene is kind of like dying or or, or it's gone way down because everybody referring to live clinics. Right. You know, because every, every coach can go on YouTube and think they can find what they want, but what you, you don't get, out of it is the camaraderie part of it, mm-hmm. the time to answer questions, you, you, you know, or ask them or, or, or whatever. So I think that's a huge part that's missing or what's the intricate part of 
So we can talk mover blocker, but like the way, way we set our screens and the angles at which we set our screens is an important factor. I don't have too much time to go into that when they give you 50 yeah. minutes or an hour, yeah. like you're just trying to get as much stuff out there. Yeah, we do a film. I do film studies with my group sometimes. So like Wednesday night, starting up a new little series, we're doing dribble drive film study on Wednesday night. Um, I pick out a team, they come in the Zoom room, we should throw it up and we like dissect. Yeah. About probably only be about 10 or 20 of us, but I think it's that that stuff right now is some of the even with all the clinics and all the stuff I've been doing, coach. Some of the small, intricate meetings with coaches and Absolutely. watching game film, watching a lot of stuff. I mean, I've been selfish a little bit with my clinics, um, inviting coaches on stuff that I want to learn about. I mean, I'm Correct. I'm the host, so what the heck? That's I mean, right, exactly. Um, so I mean, I've gotten done 20 something system related clinics. I, I reached out to different people, like how to teach the mindset, help your players, like in a big game, uh, psycho, like a sports psychologist, right. Um, different things that helps us all be a better coach. It's not because X's nose, in my opinion, has little, is little, is a little part, but that's what everybody wants to talk. Correct. Correct. I've had skill development guys that are some of the top, some some really good ones. I'll give you an example. Shooting is supposed to be the number one skill. Right? Right. Absolutely. I come and talk two hours on shooting. 25 people at the clinic. Right. And I'll have a coach do, not to knock it because I play the defense, but 1-1-3 one, one, matchup zone. Yep. Whole room's filled. Correct. And then, then the questions, then the questions in the clinic are, what are you doing against teams that have shooters? But they don't want to hear the guy speak on how to help your players become better shooters. Correct. Correct. Or vice versa. I'll have a zone offense guy come in. Will this work if I don't have shooters? Oh, you're right. <laughs> well, look at the Golden State Warriors record this year. They don't have Clay. They don't have Kevin Durant anymore, and they didn't have Steph. Yep. Oh, they're they're going to be probably number one pick in the lottery. Right. Right. <laughs> All about players. So, and and shooting. Today we talked a lot about shooting percentages and getting up shots and. Right. Um. So how how would they find your stuff, Coach? Is it what? what Want to let everybody know your website? Yeah, it's just joecunebasketball.com, J-O-E-K-U-H-N, basketball.com. The last things I want to leave you with today is before we wrap it up here, Coach, is is been asking these with guys. Um, we talked about it a little bit before we got started. Um, my all-time top five guys that I would roll against anybody. Right. Magic, Michael, LeBron, Larry, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And the way I base it is those are only guys that I actually physically saw on television. So I can't, I can't throw the Wilt Chamberlain's of the world's. Uh, right. Exactly. Those are, I was born in 1975. So pretty much my knowledge of basketball is probably like 1980s, 82, 83 on as a seven or eight year old. So who do you got? Who, yeah, who you got? Who who are you gonna who are you gonna play? You got, I'm sure you got some of the same guys, but yeah, that, that you know what that's a tough one, and and I kind of went off, kind of went off the same idea, and that I have to go off of who who I've seen. It's otherwise it's not really fair. I'm sure somebody I've not seen, Will Chamberlain, or, or you you know Jerry West, or you know maybe deserve to be in that team photo, mm -hmm. uh, so. So we talked about it a little bit. Of course, uh, for me being in Chicago, it's Michael Jordan, obviously. I still think uh, he's, he's the best of all time. Uh, mm -hmm. What separates it maybe a little bit is he didn't fail in a championship. Now, maybe 
obviously it's not just him, right? You got great players around you and Dennis Rodman, who we talked about and, and Pippen. But he, but he did uh, but fail to beat Larry Bird. <laughs> yep. He didn't, so, just because yep. he didn't get to the finals. Right. He lost when he got there, but he couldn't beat the Pistons until the end and he couldn't beat Larry. That's my only argument about Michael. Right, right. That was early. <laughs> that was early. So he had to beat, so he couldn't beat them in their prime. Well, he was he wasn't quite there yet, and maybe didn't have the team with him either. So correct. correct. You need you you need a you need a you need a Robin. But, but I, I I still I still respect I respect more how teams did it in that era, Detroit, Boston, yeah. L.A. They didn't hop. I teams. respect them a lot more than how they do it now. Yeah. The how they do it now is the AAU type of how to do it. I. Yeah, but the rule in that, in in all fairness to the guys now, the rules have changed. They couldn't do that back then. Correct. So Correct. you wouldn't have had Scotty pay, playing for a lower contract like he had for Chicago. Right. Scotty Pippen and, and Jordan wouldn't have lasted that long together. Probably, probably not. So I, anyway, so I have Michael, uh, LeBron, okay, Larry Bird for sure, okay, uh, those three. Uh, I had the fourth one that you had too. You told me Kobe. I did tell you Kobe. So you're, I had, you're throwing him out had, now. And, and him had, out now? Well, you know what? It depends. Am I going to play? Am I going to play the system? Am I going to positionless? Play Are you playing positionless? <laughs> right. Uh, you, you know. So if probably if I had to take one out and put a big in, I probably would take Kobe out of that group, and you know. Akeem Olajuwon could be a guy. Like, yep. there's a number of like tremendous. He's very, very underrated and not talked about very much. Yes, because he doesn't. Because he didn't talk to media. Yeah, he didn't sell shoes. Yep, but a great player. <laughs> oh, I mean, Kobe went to him for footwork. I mean, <laughs> but you, you know, you can't. That's what makes this topic so great. How are you yeah. gonna, how are you gonna take Kareem out of the group? Or I, my, yeah, I, I will, my best, my goat is Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Okay. And I take into a fact high school, college, and the NBA. Yep. And you're great. Michael was great because he changed, he had defensive rules to go against him, change the hand check rule, all that stuff. But when they tell in the NCAA that you can't dunk the ball anymore because you're that yeah. dominant. <laughs> right. And, and you couldn't dunk. So you had to find other ways to score that. I mean, invent, I mean, the unstoppable sky hook. Um, right. I mean, biased a little bit to that. I mean, I have two Lakers on my team. I mean, you can almost, you can almost put top, you can almost say, here's my five and just pick five Lakers and almost probably beat, you're Somebody. gonna be right there. Yep. But my question for you is: Do you have LeBron, LeBron as a small forward, or is LeBron a point guard? Uh, those guys are so good they can play anywhere they want. I mean, because I, my people people criticize mine that you got Michael, you got too many guys, you got too many alphas. I'm like, LeBron and Magic will just get the ball to Kareem, Michael, and Larry, and play off that. There's there's no question about it. There, there's no question. You do you do have a lot of alphas there. There's no doubt. But we're just we're just going to best players. Yeah. And then, so, and then we'll have to bring in your your. Uh, so you had so you had my so you had Michael Magic, Larry, and LeBron. LeBron. And did you go with did you go with Kareem too? Or are you uh, gonna go with you gonna go with Kobe and go small and let Magic be the starting center of the 1980 NBA Finals? Yeah. Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm going to take Kobe out. I'm going to go with Hakeem to be just a little bit different. Okay. Yeah. Just a, I, 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 I don't think you can go wrong. Like there are just so many great players. And so have you caught any NBA bubble yet? You, you know what? Are you still I, watching Netflix? Uh, I don't, I don't watch NBA. I'm going to, you don't, I don't. I'm, okay. I'm, so you don't have an opinion on who's going to win the NBA championship then? I don't. It's kind of funny because 
it's even one of these things where it gets near March Madness and people start asking you, who do you think is going to win it? I said, I don't know. I don't watch. I'm too busy watching my own level. So if I knew my own level, you, you know what I mean? So it's, it, it, it's, it's kind of bizarre. Hey, here's what I do watch. So I'm going to throw one at you. And I got a good buddy, Tim McGraw, at North Lake, North Lake College in Dallas, Texas. He, if he saw this, he, he would know the answer. Uh, the Chicago Blackhawks are getting ready to play. You're a hockey guy. And I love hockey. And so that's the system if, right there. Yeah, so if I'm gonna, something. that's exactly right. So if I'm going to – if if I'm home and I'm not doing anything – and I have my choice to watch a hockey game or a NBA game, I'm going to watch a hockey game. Well, you would fit well in my household because my wife is from Canada. There you go. And she got she has to have her a little bit of Don Cherry. Yep. Hockey tonight, <laughs> so I should start doing my things with the tie on. Right. Um, and the only Canadian lady I know, or a Canadian person, not too many of them, that does not like Wayne Gretzky. Wow. She's a, she's like, he was not a very physical, she likes the physical toughness. So she liked right. the Marty McSorley's and the guys that protected his butt. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so she's become, she's a, she's a Maple Leaf fan um, and adopted the Anaheim, the Anaheim Ducks out here in, there you go, in California. So, yeah, uh, the Hawks and the Ducks had some great series. As did the Hawks and Kings. Yes. Yes, they did. And Gretzky, so to me, I, I tell her, how do you not like Gretzky? Gretzky created hockey in California. No question about it. <laughs> I mean, you got three three NHL franchises. So So maybe 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 if I played the system, I might I might like it a little bit more. Like that's, said, that's, yeah. It's more hockey type because because the hangup is, is how many minutes your best players play. But in hockey, Gretzky was only playing half the game. Yeah, if that. So if, if, if you can relate that to the best player, arguably, to ever play. Right. Playing less and how efficient he was. Right, exactly. There's, a great, there's the great analogy that I could start using with people. They're like, watch there, hockey. There you go. That's it. That's uh -huh. it. So, so guys, uh, I just want to thank Coach for coming out today and spending a, spending a little bit of time with us. Check out JoeCuneBasketball.com. has a great um, mover blocker certification course that he just come out. And we'll probably be getting him on a Zoom clinic with me so that he can, so he can maybe taint some of the system guys' mentality of pack line and, and, and positionless. We, we play – Greenville plays positionless. They play five out, just pass screen or no pass cut move and just jack it. So, well, you know, it's funny because we had to do that some this year. I think we, you know, I was sharing that with you because mm -hmm. of our personnel uh, and the way it ended up and our point guard got hurt. We lost our big grades mm -hmm. and we couldn't guard a lick. Like we, it, it was the worst defensive team in my career. And so about, about two thirds of the season, I'm like, hey, we, we know we're not guarding anybody. Let's not even pretend that we're going to try to guard somebody because we just, we don't. So we're going to shoot as many threes as we can because we shot it really, really well. Uh, I think we were 43% from three as a team in conference. Wow. And we were making 15, 18, 19 threes in a game. And so, so our, our approach is going to be we need to make enough threes to win the game, you know. And, and so that's a little bit of that, you, you know. So, so it all relates in a roundabout way. It's just, it's you, just how, you, how you get it done. And, and again, I think, I think not being so stubborn – to stay with a certain system or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's just trying to meet the needs of what we have in order to be successful. And I could say run a blocker move or some of those sets. They just not, not going to work. And I'm going to, I think I'm going to mark in an ebook coach. 
mover blocker on steroids system. There you go. I have to put it on the Joe Kuhn basketball site to help me out. So there you go. Absolutely. All right, coach. Uh, thank you for joining us. That, that was it. coach Kuhn and hope, hope to see him on one of my clinics soon. Um, appreciate your time and all you do for helping grow the game, man. Appreciate it. And yeah, look forward to coming on. All right. You got it. See ya. All right. We're stopped. Okay. Perfect. You have fun. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It, it was, it wasn't all X's.